In November 2022, I've been diagnosed with CKD stage 5. My kidneys were only working at 9%. My life was done. My wife, Sarah, who spent her career in research, was of a different opinion and she got straight to work. I became her research project. Then, in April 2023, I got the call on a Saturday afternoon. I was free from the machine. Today, my GFR is back at 30. Gathering here, I've been helping kidney disease patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And it's always a huge joy for me when one of you guys sends me a message and says, you helped me. Your advice actually made a difference for me. I shared many of these incredible success stories over the course of the last years, but the one I want to share with you today is even more incredible. You see, this man was left with basically no residual kidney function and also with no hope. But instead of giving up, he decided to try his best and to become, in his own words, a research project. He documented everything he did, his diet, the supplement he was taking, his exercising regimen, his medications, and most importantly, his huge improvement in GFR numbers. And he wants me to share all this with you. So you will be able to see that there is hope. Now guys, Mark is also taking a supplement that he found here on my channel and that he thinks is too powerful. Is this what got him free from the machine? Before we get to the supplement, let's learn a little bit more about a man who was in end-stage kidney disease for five months before his life completely changed. This is a comment he left here on Double O Kidney. Hello, Catherine. I'm here to say thank you. You made a huge difference for me. My name is Mark. My wife and I have been following your YouTube channel for over a year since I've been diagnosed with CKD stage 5 in 2022. In November 2022, I ended up in an emergency room and quickly found out I had stage 5 chronic kidney disease. They told me that my kidneys were only working at 9%. I was 54. It felt like my life as I knew it was done. I couldn't get a transplant no chance my doctor told me there was no hope that this was going to be my reality forever but was it really my wife sarah who spent her career in research was of a different opinion and she got straight to work i became her research project and she was the dedicated scientist she dived into studying the benefits of a plant-based diet and most importantly looked into how people managed to stop needing dialysis. This is how she came across your channel. Oh, I'm really happy that she found useful info here. Despite my doctors and the dialysis center having no hope and saying no one gets off dialysis without a transplant, we were determined to prove them wrong. I was first started on a plant-based diet with sodium bicarbonate supplementation as well. It was to control my body acidity. Eventually, Wills decided to try a supplement you mentioned. This is a powerful one, said my wife. Ah, I bet I know what supplement she found here. There are just a couple of things that were actually used in people who needed the machine and that actually worked. Let's see if I'm right. I was nervous at first. Was this supplement going to be dangerous? Was it going to work? But my wife had a plan. When we changed my diet completely, she kept track of everything I ate and drank in a journal and an app. Slowly, I started to see improvements. They were small at first, and my medical team wasn't very supportive of my diet-based approach to fighting chronic kidney disease. It almost felt like they weren't happy about that. 
but after a few months, the improvements were significant enough to catch their attention. During a visit, my nephrologist asked us directly, what are you doing? We had a long talk with him about my diet and I'm not sure he fully believed it at first. But eventually, he started to see we might be onto something, especially when he had to reduce my dialysis sessions. My lab results kept getting better. Then, in April 2023, I got the call on a Saturday afternoon. They were taking me off dialysis. I was free from the machine. Now, I've been free for almost a year and my health continues to improve. Today, my GFR is back at 30. I want everyone to know that this is possible. Okay, thank you, Mark, very much for sharing your story here and congratulations on your incredible achievement. And guys, I know that there are cases documented in medical literature of people that were able to achieve this, to be freed from the machine. But I can tell you that actually be able to talk to someone who did this really hits differently. This is absolutely incredible. Now guys, after reading his message, I've contacted Mark and we exchanged some emails. I interviewed him because I wanted to know more about the diet he is following and also the very powerful supplement he still takes every day and that, according to his wife, was the key to achieve this incredible success. And as I was saying, he loved everything, so we will be able to learn a lot from his experience. So first of all, I ask him about his diet. My wife always has her scale and her laptop set up on the dining table. She meticulously records everything I consume in a database, paying close attention to every single gram of protein I ingest. Did you know a small serving of pasta can provide almost 10 grams of protein? I certainly didn't, but my wife never misses an opportunity to remind me. She's established specific daily targets for my intake of protein, calories, sugar, and so forth. Okay, this is very interesting. It's very important, especially for those that don't want to end up tied to a machine in the first place. Because now you may ask, why is she so worried about the protein in pasta? Isn't avoiding meat and dairy enough? To protect the kidneys? No, it's not. I'll try to explain. A big part of the reason why they were so successful in getting Mark out of the chair is because they were so accurate in measuring protein intake. I don't talk enough about this aspect of the diet on the channel, but what this man's wife is doing is really remarkable. It's not easy to put together a renal diet that's actually effective. This is a diet of compromise, especially when it comes to protein intake. You cannot eat too much protein because it will damage your kidneys, but you cannot eat too little protein as well because you will risk malnutrition. This is a huge problem with the renal diet that today's medicine is struggling to solve. Now, some patients end up having to take special amino acid supplements in order to avoid malnutrition, even when following a diet that's very low on protein. But for the majority of patients, what I would recommend is to follow Mark's example and to log everything you eat. And you don't even need a fancy computer software for that. You can get a free app on your phone, such as Chronometer, for example. But let's read more from Mark. Still a lot to learn from a man who went from a GFR of 9 to a GFR of 30. One critical factor she emphasizes is acidity. Whenever the program indicates that the acidity levels are too high, she strategically reduces grains and legumes from my diet and incorporates an increased amount of spinach and other greens. Oh, that's very smart. However, it's not all stringent dietary restrictions. I generally enjoy many of the meals she prepares. My lunches often featured homemade soy yogurt with raisins and slices of orange. Our dinner menu includes favorites like bulgur and wheat pilaf, orange tofu, black bean tacos, bean chili, and numerous variations of brown rice and beans. 
We're also fond of potato bars where we bake potatoes and add an assortment of toppings. It's a delightful way to enjoy a meal together. Okay, this is very interesting. And there are two points I want to make here. First of all, it's great that he found ways to eat not just healthy but also tasty. I mean, this is a diet most people should be on for a long period of time, as long as possible. This is why experimenting in the kitchen should be a must. Try as many variations on rice and beans as possible. Try various spices and condiments. I see he likes orange flavored tofu and that he makes his own soy yogurt. Soy yogurt is amazing because it's dairy free, so no phosphorus, but it still tastes great. Also potato bars with toppings. I mean, it's clear that they are being very creative here. And this is something most people don't get about following a diet. It's not all about restrictions. Now, the other point I wanted to make is acidity. Guys, I want to be very clear on this. Keeping your blood acidity under control with the diet is one of the most important aspects of the treatment for kidney disease. So what his wife is doing here is using the diet to modulate his blood acidity. And this is frankly genius. I don't believe he could have gotten better without doing this. And you can do the same by the way. How do you control your blood acidity, you may ask? Well, this is another very underrated aspect of the renal diet that can make a huge difference. Because you see, while the general population can eat all the meat and they really want, if you do that, your blood will become too acidic. This is a huge problem. It causes serious damage to your organs, kidneys in particular. Having too high blood acidity is extremely common in CKD patients. Remember that keeping blood acidity in check is one of the main jobs of the kidney. So if your goal is to keep your kidneys healthy, you must help your kidneys doing that. How can you do this? Well, by understanding which foods put more acid load on the kidneys and which will help them removing excess acid. As we can see here, meat and dairy and fish are extremely acid forming and that's bad. But also grains and legumes are slightly acid forming, alright? They are in the middle of this chart. So if you think your diet is too acid forming, what you need to do is adding lots of leafy greens. Leafy greens are the most alkalizing foods on earth and frankly, if your goal is to protect your kidneys, you should eat as many of them as you can. Now Mark also mentioned sodium bicarbonate. This is a supplement that's used exactly to keep your blood acidity under control. To benefit from sodium bicarbonate, you must keep an eye on your lab analysis and see how your CO2 level is doing all right. If your CO2 level is below 23, this is a problem. Talk to your doctor immediately because you need sodium bicarbonate. Seriously, keep an eye on your CO2 level and take action immediately if it is below 23. Okay, there is another question I've asked Mark about his diet. Mark, I really love how you and your wife are approaching the whole renal diet concept. After how long of this scientific diet have you start seeing improvements? I saw changes almost immediately. The dark circles that had taken residence under my eyes began to diminish and a healthy you returned to my complexion. My legs had swollen to such an extent that slipping into my shoes had become an impossibility. They were aching to inflated balloons. However, within a month of adopting this new dietary regimen, the swelling in my legs had subsided significantly, allowing me to comfortably wear my shoes once more. Even more astonishing was the progressive increase in my urine output. Day by day, a tangible sign of my body's recuperation. This marked improvement instilled in me a belief that perhaps, contrary to my doctor's prognosis, my future would not be irrevocably chained to a machine. Despite being told it was an impossibility, the reality proved otherwise. The moment we received confirmation that I no longer required the machine, our joy was unbonded. In an effort to disseminate our breakthrough, we initiated a small Facebook group aimed at sharing our journey and achievements. I wanted to help people. 
now nearly a year liberated from the machine, not only have my laboratory results continued to improve, but our small Facebook has grown to over 7,000 members across more than 100 nations. A multitude of individuals have replicated the success I've experienced, a testament to the power of shared knowledge and collective endeavor. Thank you for sharing. I can only imagine how that must have felt. And I bet that now people also want to know what the powerful supplement Mark considers a big part of his success. So I asked Mark, what is the powerful supplement you mentioned and would you recommend it as well? Yes, it's something called Q-Gel made by the Tishkan Corporation. My wife saw your video about it and decided right away that I needed to try it. I'm not sure if it was just in my head or what, but as soon as I started taking it, I felt less pain in my bones. I'm taking six pills per day, so it's a high dose as well. I used to have constant shoulder pain, but after taking these pills, it went away. Was it because of the Q-Gel? I can't say for sure. But my wife believes it's really helped my kidneys and based on that, I plan to keep taking it for the foreseeable future. Okay, this is very interesting. I know why this supplement helped him with bone pain as well. Because you see, this is one of the few supplements ever used to get people to stop needing the machine. So what is Q-Gel and how can this supplement achieve what most doctors still consider impossible? No, this is not acacia fiber. This is an antioxidant, a vitamin-like molecule usually referred to as coenzyme Q10 or CoQ10. Q-Gel is in fact a special form of CoQ10 that was actually used in a clinical trial on CKD patients in stage 5 undergoing renal replacement therapy. Now guys, as Mark pointed out, I actually talked about this trial in one of my previous videos. In this trial, 48 test subjects that were actually undergoing renal replacement therapy received 60 mg three times a day of a special formulation of CoQ10 sold under the name Q-Gel. The results were outstanding. As we can see here, of 48 patients tested with CoQ10, 9 were able to stop the need for renal replacement therapy in a matter of weeks. Their kidneys started working again. It was a miracle. A miracle that's actually documented in medical literature, in a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial as well. Now, what they used here is not the same CoQ10 most brands sell. Q-Gel is a special pharmaceutical grade form of water-soluble CoQ10, okay? So they turn this molecule from fat-soluble to water-soluble. According to Professor Singh, the author of the study, water-soluble CoQ10 can raise your serum levels of CoQ10 much quicker than regular supplements. That's why they used it. And there are various brands selling their regular CoQ10 or even water soluble CoQ10 that you can use. This is a very popular supplement. And not many people know this, but when there is too little CoQ10 in the body, which is often caused by age or by taking statins, bone and muscle pain can be a symptom. So I don't think it was placebo effect after all. And guys, if you want to see more success stories like this one, my video up here is for you and this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye.